Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ryan Newple here, Noob Sports Show, episode 201. We are in the 200s. We are moving forward with uh, with this episode. Super excited for what's to come in the 200s. Uh, thank you for all the support and for tuning in to these shows. Uh, we try to bring you awesome guests in the industry uh, of iGaming or sports business or just people doing amazing things uh, across the industries that we all know and love. I, I saw a lot of you at the SBC conference uh, just a couple weeks or just last week. Um, thank you for saying hello there. Love conferences. So it was awesome to meet a lot of listeners and, and, and people that are tuning into this show. I really appreciate when you come up to me and, and, and say, listen, because it just kind of keeps me ticking a little bit. Right. And so uh, thank you for that. SBC was an amazing event. Hopefully you enjoyed it if you were there. All right. Without further ado, we are going to bring on our special guest today. I'm super excited and honored to have Anika Howard of Wonder Nation on with me. Anika, how are you? Hi, Ryan. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm glad to, to finally be, be here. I know I'm, I'm doing well. Thank you. And, I, and I'm excited to have you as well. I know we've spoken, I just mentioned events and we've spoken at previous events before and I've asked you to come on. And so it's it's, it's super uh, awesome to have you here and, and get to Absolutely. know you a little bit uh, as well. well so, looking so, forward to it. Awesome. So cool. So so you're in Connecticut, right? You're uh, you're up there in the northeast uh, part of uh, the United States. Yep, I'm in northeast, um, southeastern Connecticut, uh, Mashantucket, uh, Connecticut, right uh, near uh, Foxwoods. So cool. Wonder Nation is owned by the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation, the same tribe that owns Foxwoods, and so that's my home as of late. Awesome, <laughs> um, awesome. And we're here gonna, in Connecticut. That's great. We're going to dive into Wonder Nation and what it's all about here in a bit. But first, Anika, I want to hear a little bit about you. What uh, what makes you tick? What was your uh, career path leading up to where you are today? Wow. So going to be a little bit reflective here. I was thinking about this and I've been in this, the gaming industry for over 20 years. And that wow. is a lot to say out loud. That's a yeah. long time. Uh, and I really, when I, mean, I look back, I started my career very green, um, not necessarily with this intent to kind mm. of build a career or even go into gaming. But uh, when I was introduced to gaming, I was a uh, intern. I was in. I was still an MBA. I was still in, in graduate school, and I joined through Harris Entertainment, which has a program called the President's Associate mm. Program. And I think it's still in existence in some, in some version today with Caesars. And I really came in with the desire to change how the industry viewed technology, specifically online gaming and digital. I have always considered myself a technologist. And so when I came into gaming, I had lots of questions. And so we went through the rotation and did all these other things. And I immediately saw like these opportunities uh, that have really taken this long to come to pass. Mm. And so my career progression really mirrored the growth and acceptance of interactive in the gaming industry. Hmm. So a lot of my positions, it was almost like we were creating a path together. So okay. I was primarily stepping into positions that were cre being created as the industry was shifting. So hmm. I didn't have a blueprint and there was very rarely a position that um, I was entering in that they ha I had a predecessor to talk to. It was usually, okay, now <laughs> this is something new, we're creating it. Um, and even uh, as part of uh, what I'm doing today, but I think what I've been really fortunate to be or to be at the forefront of a lot of the evolutions that we've seen in gaming from uh, the launch of uh, the introduction of a lot of interactive and revenue management, mm -hmm. uh, kind of what the evolutions we've seen in loyalty, uh, the launch of iLottery, of iGaming, you know, repeal of PAPSPA. So it's been a very, I can say that every year has been completely different and and uh an adventure that's amazing you said you had a love for tech and you consider yourself kind of a, a technologist i'm curious where that love came from i mean what is that just something that you've enjoyed your entire life or or where did the love for tech really come from, from uh, so um my father is a mathematician and uh, i started out early on um and computer engineering so when uh, i was younger kind of building doing computers i thought it was going to be an engineer uh, but then as I kind of went into college wanting to shift that, I discovered um, online and interactive and it really blended a lot of my interest in terms of my artistic pursuits and kind of that left brain, right brain in terms of creativity, but also the idea of being able to uh, 
uh, plan and see what you create come to life. So mm. I really like that aspect of it. That's I awesome. It's kind of stuck. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's a uh, thank you for all that background <laughs> and, and the wonderful story and everything there. That's amazing. So let's dive into Wonder Nation. I know the people listening uh, may or may not have heard about your company. So uh, give us the high level um, idea of what Na Wonder Nation is. I'm gonna pull up the website kind of side by side okay. here. Uh, no, but absolutely. I'd love to hear um, kind of the elevator pitch of what uh, Wonder Nation is. Yeah, no, so we like to consider ourselves um, that we're reimagining gaming entertainment. So Wonder Nation was launched in conjunction with the, the, the legalization of online gaming and sports betting here in the state of Connecticut. Hmm. And the whole intent was really to be able to look at um, gaming differently and expand the digital footprint of the tribe. So mm. when I think about Wonder Nation, I think about it as um, the extension of everything beyond the physical experience within the property. So mm. you look at social casino, uh, online gaming and sports betting, esports, uh, bingo, kind of all these different things that you can do uh, once you leave the 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 casino experience or leave the reservation and how does that create? I um, mean, really, I think the shifting is kind of focusing from a land-based consumer to really this idea of this digital native player and what are the things that we can do to authentically and differently connect with players that have, you know, by their preference decided that they want to be, uh, that their focus or their, their desire is on, it's online. So a lot of what we're trying to do is focused on creating experiences for online players. That's amazing. And and are you, uh, I mean, are you the founder of this company? The, you're obviously the acting CEO currently, but are you, yes. uh, where, where were you in the start of this company? So from the inception, so I am the Ooh. inaugural CEO, but a lot of the structure and vision is my brainchild along with the the tribal council and leadership of Mash and Tech and Pequot Tribal Nation, we kind of collectively wanted, like I said, to create something that was unique and also created a blueprint and opportunity to um, pr provide a service for other tribal nations and other mm -hmm. tribal casinos. Um, one of the things that we want to be able to do is to use what we're doing as a blueprint and then to be able to build capabilities that we can then um, cross uh, cross pollinate with other with other tribes and so work with them with other tribes to develop like what is your go to market strategy how do you yeah. create your digital experiences what are some of the things that you want to do as you prepare for real money gaming on uh, and kind of legalization in your state or in, in in some instances if that's not coming that doesn't mean that you know you can't participate through social or esports or some other type of even development of digital content so really. Um, trying to bring that to the forefront and um, showing how this can be a unique offering and competitive um, positioning for for tribes. That's amazing. And you're, are you able to speak on any of the partners that you guys currently have? I mean, are there any uh, brands that, that you can talk through? Like what types of companies are you currently working with? Uh, so, I mean, I can talk to, um, uh, so there are a couple of things that we're doing. And so some, you, they're kind of very common knowledge. And so mm -hmm. um, we are have a, we have a market access deal with DraftKings to deliver sports betting and online gaming in the state of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the managed services provider for Foxwoods. So Foxwoods is not only our partner, but they're also our client. And so Ruby7 kind of powers the the Fox Play virtual uh, play for fun casino. Mm -hmm. And um, we work in partnership with them to deliver that service for the Foxwoods team. And I mean, one of the things that we're in deep in right now is to build this ecosystem of providers that we can work with, that we can, that we can work together. And so in many cases, um, I can, I see uh, Wonder Nation as this facilitator, uh, mm -hmm. kind of bringing it, bringing together all of these um, types of companies that that um, have uh, similar values to us. And so that's what we're doing right now. A lot of the work that we've kind of been hands down and are kind of working um, both, not just uh, companies that are within the gaming industry, but we definitely see um, the opportunity to bring in tech from outside of gaming mm -hmm. because in many cases, there are lots of things that we can learn from other industries and other partners and, and bringing that bringing that to bear as we come. 
So I'm really excited about some of the things we're working on that we can't yet talk about. Yeah. But um, the our goal and objective is really just to create kind of this ecosystem of providers and partners that we can um, work with together to bring solutions to the market. That's amazing. You know, you guys offering so many services. You're almost like the glue for these companies, keeping it all together, putting it all together, putting the puzzle pieces together for them. Really, really cool. Anika, I got a question for you. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. You know, okay. as the acting CEO, you've been doing it for quite a while, um, living the CEO life. What is one of the personal challenges that you go through on a day to day basis or just one of the biggest challenges of, of acting as a CEO in iGaming? Right. Because there's probably other CEOs listening that may be that may be experiencing similar challenges. And, and I'm just curious, what, what challenges do you see uh, from your role as CEO of Wonder Nation? I mean, I think there are, are two things. One, kind of balancing um, long-term and short-term, making sure that you're, you have your eyes very focused on what are the things that are going to drive revenue, that are gonna drive engagement, that are gonna drive value uh, for, for, for the tribe in this case. And then making sure that um, you're still future looking and you're making sure that the decisions that you have now, understanding the impact that they'll have kind of long term and making sure that you are uh, being um, strategic and um, and thoughtful in how some of those things come together. And I think also growing and building the team. Uh, one of the things that I'm very mindful of are, you know, with a small uh, startup, um, as you're building that team, how do you create a culture of innovation? How do you make sure that people stay motivated and we have a hybrid team? What are the things that you need to do to make sure that um, the team has the things that they need, need to be successful and also feel empowered they can make the decisions needed? That's amazing. You guys... You guys clearly take pride in in supporting and being part of, of the tribal nation and being yeah. a part of, of that world. I know just recently you guys had some news where you became the official sponsor of, of a museum. I'm yeah. not even going to try to uh, like pronounce it because like, I can't pronounce <laughs> words very well. But tell us a little bit about that news and, and just about the that um, that pride that you guys take uh, with some of that yeah. stuff that you do with the tribal nations. No, absolutely. So I'll start with just kind of the pride that um, we have in kind of being a tribal entity. One of the things that have what has been a core value for Wonder Nation is the ability to use kind of the the skills and talents that we have to give back to the tribal community, but also the larger community at large uh, mm. overall. And um, with that, it comes with because we feel like there's a, a strong sense of responsibility in that. A big piece of that is building a pipeline of tribal talent. And so making sure that there's opportunities for tribal members and um, and people that normally don't necessarily have access to this market to understand and be part of it. And um, that starts a lot with the, the programs that we've created specifically for the Mash, Mash and Tucket Pequot tribe, Tribal Nation. <laughs> and so part of that, we were very excited about um, being a sponsor for the Mashantech Tech and Pequot um, Museum and Research Center. And part of that really involves programming, uh, developing and helping implement technology that once again, going back to this idea of digital experiences. So how do you create augmented reality experiences, other types of things that enhances the overall experience someone comes when it comes have when they come to the museum? What are the different types of programming that we can sponsor to help uh, support the local community? So we're doing an artisan um, entrepreneurship fair next week. Um, we're excited about that. And we have a whole list of, of other things that we're working in partnership with the museum to launch. But beyond that, we have our, um, with, with the, um, we have something called the Wonder Nation Smart Labs. And mm -hmm. so those are also STEAM STEAM education opportunities. And so we're partnering with an organization called ACES and working on also on bringing other similarly organizations together to provide curriculum for tribal youth. So right now, uh, tribal youth are learning how to program Spiro robots mm -hmm. and a lot of different things. And so our first kind of iteration of students are coming through that. Um, we're wrapping up that first program and getting ready for the summer initiative. And um, we also have, uh, 
associate and apprentice programs that will give, similar to how I started in gaming, a rotation through the different departments and then an opportunity to, to work with Wonder Nation at the end. So a lot of the things that we're trying to do are not just um, kind of laying the foundation for uh, for kind of the financial growth, but mm -hmm. also for kind of that knowledge, because knowledge, once you have that knowledge, uh, you, you know, that's, that's the foundation of, of everything. Wow. Yeah. Reimagining gaming entertainment. I mean, when you start talking, you know, AI and, and tech and uh, robots and all of this, you sure are, you sure are reimagining uh, the, the gaming world. So that's amazing, Anika. It sounds like you guys are doing amazing things, but let's let's kind of fast forward to the future. And, and this is kind of a two part question. Yeah. Uh, one, what does the future look like for Wonder Nation? And, and then secondly, um, what could maybe somebody potentially watching this show or listening to this show what kind of help or what are you guys looking for? What needs do you guys have as you as you attack that future uh, for your business? Yeah. And so, I mean, I think the interesting thing is that uh, the future is always evolving. So some things that we're looking at are kind of what are the new tech that 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 is coming into to place. And so for me, um, we have started to do a lot of kind of baseline work with generative AI. So, you know, kind of algorithms such as um, chat GPT that really allow you to create new content. And we're looking at all the different kind of uses for that yeah. from, you know, fraud protection, um, customer support, analytics, predictive modeling, really kind of understanding how that is going to streamline and help uh, with a lot of the things that are now kind of up and coming in the gaming industry. And then also what are the things that we need to be mindful of and what types of uh, tools that we need to have in place and measures that we need to um, and and um, regs and procedures that we need to take to put in place to take advantage of that. So I mean that's one that's of considerable interest to mm -hmm. us. I think really um, I also kind of like the idea of um, content marketing and leaning into how do you create how do you create these authentic connections with players um, because I think. Um, you know, all of the technology and, you know, all those things, I think we're going to have a lot of people doing similar types of apps. We know that esports, we know the expansion of gaming, we know social casino, all of these other things, but what are the things that we can do to differentiate ourselves? And so like, how do you use content in that way from cross promotion, um, from player acquisition, player engagement, mm. et cetera, to try to kind of build um, to, to build those relationships with players. And so I think as we're looking, um, we're looking for um, organizations that um, are looking to kind of break, kind of break the wheel to say, hey, we see that there's a sea of sameness in the industry and we want to be disruptors. We want to say, okay, how do we do things differently? And how, yeah. and where are kind of the opportunities segments in the market that maybe um, no one's focusing on, that there's an opportunity to kind of be a differentiator or first mover in those spaces. Uh, and so that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for people that kind of want to go on a journey with us. Wow, Anika, you are <laughs> truly a, a gem in this industry. And I wanted to thank you just for just, honestly, every time I go to these conferences, you know, it, it becomes very apparent that it's it's kind of a very male driven industry. And I think you being a woman in iGaming and you guys are trying to like change that narrative a little bit. And, and I can tell uh, you're just doing amazing things. So I wanted to thank you for, for being a woman in iGaming and, and embracing <laughs> that. You. And, uh, you know, I think that's really kind of cool. And, and you're one of the handful that has been on this show um, a handful of women. So really, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you giving us a platform for us to talk about Wonder Nation and, and for recognizing that as well. We're, you know, it's definitely something that for me is very important to show that, you know, th that it can be done and there's opportunities and to be an example um, for women that may be at the beginning of their career that kind of say, that are wondering if this is something that's for them. So hopefully I can be a positive uh, example or role model in that way. Amazing. If people listening wanted to get a hold of you, Anika, uh, how would they get a hold of you? Or, or I put the the Wonder Nation website up earlier, but what's the best path to get to you? I'm sorry. The best path actually is LinkedIn. If you connect with oh. me on LinkedIn, um, I Perfect. can kind of get you there. Uh, that has um, all my contacts. I am very actively, you know, shoot me a message there. I, I, I can connect uh, the website. I think there's a way for us for you to kind of connect on the website as well. And um, 
Mm. Yeah, I think those are the other two best ways to get me. I'm on all socials. So if you find me, you can follow me <laughs> and um, and then, then we can connect. Love That'd LinkedIn. Link, LinkedIn. LinkedIn gets two thumbs up from me. So yeah. yeah no, it's been really good for us. And definitely follow the, the Wonder Nation, kind of connect with the Wonder Nation yeah. um, LinkedIn page. Uh, we try to keep active and kind of share industry tips and things that are happening cool. as well as uh, you can follow the team on all, on all of our adventures. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm going to let you go, Anika. I know, you know, we try to keep this 20 minutes or so, but any last words, anything we missed, anything you wanted to touch on uh, that maybe we didn't cover um, before we let you go? No, I mean, I think it, I think it's all. I just think that, you know, this is an opportunity for us all to um, think differently. And so I would say, you know, just take a chance and uh, be creative and kind of lean into the things that, that you're passionate about. I love that advice. That's really good advice. Take a chance. Take that risk, right? Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. All right, Anika, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you back on soon. And I really hope to see you in person again at one of the upcoming events. Same here. Absolutely. Well, All thank right. you again, Ryan. No problem. We'll talk to you soon. All right. That was Anika Howard of Wonder Nation. Episode 201 is in the books. Oh, man, what a great interview. That was amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed that as well. Uh, please, we'll put the links in the show notes. If you have any questions or comments for Anika, you can reach out to her on LinkedIn or you can find me at Ryan Nupel on most socials. Noop, however you want to find me out there, you'll find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want me. Um, all right. That's it for episode 201. Uh, we'll be back, I'm sure, with some others here soon. So um, if you need anything until then, you know how to find me. Take care, stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.